Today I'll explain to you how a jet engine works like you've never heard before. It's the simplest way imaginable. Here's a typical diagram that you find on the internet that makes you think you need to be a brain surgeon to understand it. Countless fans and blades all rotating at different speeds, in different areas, intake, compression, exhaust. What's going on here? Today we'll build a diagram to make a jet engine out of a tin can. Left side is open, right side is closed. Let's make a hole at the top where we can pour some fuel. On the side there, let's make a hole so fresh air can get in because we're about to start a fire. Let's take a match and light it up. In real life, it's a brief electrical spark, just like how you start your propane barbecue. Once the flame has started, we don't need the matches anymore. Cool, now we have constant fuel pouring in and a little bit of fresh air entering from the small hole on the side. And we have a constant flame shooting out the back. So what do we have here? We have some sort of a blowtorch. Is that what a jet engine is? Kind of, in its most basic form. It's just a blowtorch, fuel and air mixture set on fire, blowing out the back. Newton's third law of motion states, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Like when you shoot a bullet from a gun, it kicks your hand back in the opposite direction of the bullet. This flame has mass and speed, and it's shooting off to the left. Let's think of it for now as blowing wind out of the flame. So the whole can, our new engine, will want to move to the right. So here we have our most basic jet engine. Let's continue step by step. Let's put a propeller or fan against the flame, so the flame is blowing against it. We will also extend our tin can, so our new fan is enclosed inside of it. The fan will absorb some of this wind and will rotate. It's important to note that the fan won't block all the wind, and some of it will still pass through the fan. But we're gonna do something really cool with a spinning fan. So we take the spinning fan and hook it up to a shaft that goes all the way to the front of our engine. And there at the front we will put another fan or propeller. So the fan in the back will force the fan in the front to spin at the exact same speed. Now we want to open the front of the tin can to let more fresh air in. Here you go. Now the fan in the front will push air into the can providing a large supply of fresh air so we can have a much bigger fire and burn more fuel. All good things if we want more power. So now with this bigger fire, the fan in the back will turn even faster, which will cause the fan in the front to also turn faster. So now we can have even more air and we can add more fuel and have an even bigger fire. So you could see now that this is a vicious cycle of power. More air, more fuel, more fire, more thrust. But there is one major lie in my diagram. The fan in the front will actually be bigger in diameter than the can. Because it's bigger than the can, it's actually compressing air into the can, not just blowing it in. Compressed air is great because we can make a bigger fire with it. It's more dense and creates a sort of fire on steroids. So let's recap and add some terminology. Any fan that absorbs energy from the fire, like our fan in the back, is called a turbine. And the fan in the front is called, you guessed it, a compressor. Also, the rotating shaft that connects our turbine to the compressor is called the N2 shaft. Try to remember that. So our turbine's job is to capture some of the energy from the flame and send it to the front to create a compressed supply of new fresh air to enter our engine. Let's compare it with the first diagram that is common out there on the internet. So far, we've covered only the purple section. So why does this diagram have two turbines in the back and six compressors in the front? Just design and efficiency. Six fans compressing air one after another is a good way to achieve super high compression of fresh air. And the two fans in the back, the two turbines, to capture more of the energy from the flame to send it to the compressors. But don't let all that confuse you. So far we covered only half the story. These days, when we say jet or turbojet engine, we almost always mean turbofan engine. This far, we only made a pure jet engine. So here's an aircraft with a pure jet engine. Those don't exist anymore. They were used decades ago on airliners and fighter jets like this F-4. And this is a 737 from the 70s that also has pure jet engines. Notice how small the engines were compared to a modern 737 with turbofans. Look how big these engines are. Interestingly, even modern fighter jets are no longer pure jets. They all have turbofan engines like this F-16. So what is a turbofan? This is a turbofan, 
the purple, the green, and everything else. Let me explain why the engineers decided to complicate things and add more parts to our jet engine. So our tin can, a pure jet engine, is pretty inefficient. It actually does really well at very high altitudes where the air is thin, but down low, it's just an inefficient animal that likes to get drunk on fuel. A normal propeller like in a piston plane, like on a Cessna 172, is very efficient at lower altitudes because the air is so thick. So a turbofan engine is a jet engine that essentially adds a sort of propeller to the front. Yes, a propeller. So here again is our pure jet engine. As pilots, we may refer to it as our N2. Well, let's add another turbine in the back to capture some of that leftover wind that passed through our first turbine. Now we want to run a shaft from this back turbine all the way to the very front of the engine. But we already have a shaft and it's in the way, remember? But there is a way, a shaft inside a shaft, both rotating freely with their own speeds and they never actually touch each other. They are not connected in any way. So our old N2 shaft is hollow and our new shaft goes inside of it. So our new turbine in the back is connected to our new longer shaft that will go all the way to the front of the engine. This shaft is called the N1 shaft. And at the very front, we install another fan. That's the big propeller we wanted. It's very big and very efficient at low altitudes. And guess what it's called? A fan. Can you believe it? But it's not a normal propeller like you'd find in a Cessna 172. Because a normal propeller is not efficient at high speeds and we want our jet engine to go fast. So it has many blades and is surrounded by our can. This gives us a high speed efficiency and performance. Let's enclose our big fan in the front and everything else. So this big new fan we have in the front will spin very fast because of our new turbine in the back that is connected to it. And some of the air from the big new fan will be pushed back into the compressor and some of the air will be pushed freely out the back over the jet engine. The surrounding air assists in making the turbofan engine much quieter than a jet engine. That airflow surrounding the internal jet engine creates a sort of a sound insulation or a sound buffer. If you've ever been around a true jet engine, it's an ear bleeding experience. So a modern jet engine is actually a turbofan that has two components. A pure jet engine inside, the N2, and a large outer shell for the large enclosed propeller in the front, the N1 fan. A turbofan engine can be fairly large because it has a huge fan in the front surrounded by the big can. But it's mostly empty space in there. In the heart of the turbofan engine lives a small jet engine, surprisingly small, which supplies this huge source of energy. In the end, we end up with two sources of thrust. The big fan in the front acting like a propeller pushing air backwards and also fast moving air from the jet blowing out the back at high speeds that wasn't captured by the turbines. To recap all the parts, any fan that absorbs energy from the flame is called a turbine. Try to remember that. The first turbine the fire hits is the high pressure turbine, which spins a compressor up front via the N2 shaft. The low pressure turbine is capturing the fire energy remaining and will turn the big fan in the front via the N1 shaft. The fire in the can is called the combustion chamber. Go figure. On the next video, I'll explain the details of how I start the engines in my Citation 501 using all the terminology we have just learned in this video. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please support me by like and subscribe. Watching ITT, anything over 500, we kill it.